hello and welcome. This is video three in a series on Eureka Doom Editor. And uh, I recommend watching the previous two videos. There should be a link to a playlist in the description of this video. And today we're going to create a new level. Uh, right now I, I've opened up Eureka and I'm looking at the first level of whatever wad I have selected. And it is, uh, in this particular case, the first level of Doom 2. Now, I keep on saying that we're working with WAD files. There's actually two types of WAD files. There's an IWAD and a PWAD. An IWAD is your main WAD file. It's the one that contains everything for the original game or uh, some sort of full version of the game. And in most cases, you're not going to want to edit that unless you're creating your own uh, IWAD. But in most cases, you're going to make a PWAD file, which is loaded over the odd IWAD file. Uh, if I come up here to file and I go fresh map, it's going to tell me that I cannot do that uh, unless I'm editing a PWAD file. Because right now we're working with the uh, Doom 2 IWAD file. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to go up to new project and it's going to ask me to create a WAD file. So I'm just going to go to uh, a folder, uh, create new, I'll just call it WADs. And then I'm going to give my project a name. And so now when I'm working with this, every time I save all my levels, they're going to go into this WAD file. And I'll just call it Tutorial. Sure. And I'll click Save. Uh, it's going to ask me about my project. And of course, you can change these if you want. If you're creating a Doom 1 level or if you want to use Free Doom, uh, you can do that. Whatever source port you're using. Um, if you have more than one map type in here, you probably know what you're doing there. That has to do with other games other than Doom. And of course, as I mentioned in a previous video, if you have another WAD file that has uh, new sprites or textures or sound or something that you want to use uh, in your game, you want to load that here. That way you can access those textures while you're creating. But I'm just going to leave that blank for now. I'm going to click OK. And what that's going to do is create a brand new map for me right here. And what it is, it's just a square room. If I hit T over here to go to things, you can see it has four players. And you pretty much always want these four players. It's player one, player two, and player three. Player one, player two, player three, and player four start positions. Other sort of start positions you may or may not want, uh, depending on your what you're creating, are deathmatch start positions, which are put in different places of the level. If you're going to have a four-player co-op, you're going to want these four starts. And... Uh, Eureka is going to warn you if you don't have at least these, and it's actually going to also warn you uh, if you don't have any deathmatch, just reminding you that you might want those. Uh, so right now, what I can do is I can hit Control S to save, and then Control T to test my level. Uh, I can also go up to Tools and say T here, and you can see it says Control T for test, so I can do test in game. Uh, the first time you do this, it will probably ask you what Doom uh, where your Doom executable is, and you'll have to point to it. And uh, I already have it pointed at PR Boom, so if I hit, uh, again, you have to save, so Control S and then Control T, and it's going to start the game for me. And this is that level that we just uh, were looking at, that basic room. It's a fresh map. I'll go ahead and exit out of that. Um, so let's start working on this a little bit more. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to go S to go into sector mode. I'm going to select this sector. We don't see our floor and ceiling flats here. What I can do is I can click over here and then I can choose, okay, right now I have the ceiling selected and I can change the ceiling. If I unselect that again, I can use my left mouse to, button to choose the floor texture or my right to choose the ceiling. So I can change the floor texture to this and then this is the same texture but with a lighting source. So I'll right click that to put it on the ceiling. So we have that. We don't want to go into the game every time we want to see what we're creating. And luckily, nowadays, we have 3D previews of the game, which we did not have back in the 90s uh, when you're creating Doom levels. So it's very nice. And the way you can get into that, well, you can go up to view. I use keyboard shortcuts. Oh, they're right there. Toggle 3D view. Uh, it doesn't give you a keyboard shortcut here. Uh, and I wish that it would tell you it's actually tab. So if I'm over here and I hit tab, it's going to bring me into 3D view. But you notice everything's black and as I turn, you get this weird looking preview. And the reason for that, if I hit tab again to get out of 3D mo uh, mode and I use my mouse wheel to scroll out, you can see this arrow. That's where you're standing in your 3D view. And there's a good chance it's going to be outside your map when you first start a map. Uh, so what you can do is uh, either go in 3D view and walk all the way over here, or I can just put my mouse here and I can hit the... Um, uh, what you call it, apostrophe key on your keyboard, and it will put it wherever your mouse is. 
So I can put it there and then I can tab and now I'm in this room and this is what this room should look like with the players constantly watching you wherever you go. Uh, let's go ahead and change the wall textures. So I'm going to tab to get out of that mode. Right now we have the sector selected. Again, I can click it to select it and unselect it. If it's if you have the sector selected like so, and you hit L to go into line mode, as we talked about in previous video, it'll actually select all those lines for you. Uh, if you didn't have them selected, you can just manually click on each one to select them. Uh, and then you can also use your back tick, uh, or also known as your, also the same key as your tilde key, which is on your top number row of your keyboard, the one that is to the left of your number one on most keyboards, uh, that will deselect everything. So if you wanted to deselect everything, you just tap that and it deselects it. So I can select this and this and that. You can also draw boxes around the walls you want. Now, uh, if I unselect those, it has to be a full selection. So if I go like this, it's only going to select that left wall. Uh, so be aware of that because that comes in. You have to think about that when you're selecting things, when you have lots of things. Uh, and you'll see as we move on into the levels. Uh, another thing it will do, if I have two walls selected, let's say, if I do the box mode like this, it's actually going to invert the selection. So again, if I do this, I have the top and bottom walls or lines selected. And if I select that, now it reverses that, which can be useful. And tab to uns or not tab, um, back tick to unselect all those. Let's go ahead and select them and change the wall texture. So we will come down here and I'll just pick a different wall texture. I'll pick this one because I think it kind of goes with our floor texture. Again, tab to get into my little view here. And there we go. We have this nice little level here. Now, real quick, I can come in here and I can start drawing vertices to create uh, new sectors. Uh, so the way I'm going to do that is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit G for grid. You can also come down here to where it says grid and choose grid, the size of your grid. So I can choose 64 here. I can choose 512 if I wanted larger. You can see the darker blue lines versus the lighter blue lines. If I want to go real small, I can go down to eight here. Um, but other ways you do that, G will toggle it on and off. And then once it's on, uh, your number row at the top, so one through, does it go to zero? Yep, yeah. uh, can adjust your grid size. Uh, so most things I do, I do in six or five are the two most common I use. So uh, G to turn grid on and off, and then you can use your number row at the top to change your grid size. So at this point, let's just quickly draw a new sector. And another thing you can do is you can see this button down here that says free. You can do freeze, free or snap. And you can click that. Or when you're in your map mode here, you can hit F to turn snap on and off. And it all depends. Are you building straight walls? Or are you building like a rocky cave? You may want to turn snap off. For the most part, if I'm building walls like this, I'm going to turn snap on. So. I'm going to hit F until this says snap down here, and then I'm going to hit V to go into vertices mode. Now, I can add vertices to a wall by left clicking, like so, which we'll talk about more in the future. You might want to do that if you're going to um, move uh, an existing wall. So right now, I added some in their, their select. So I'm going to hit the back tick to unselect them, and then I can click and drag one. So now I have a little uh, indentation on my wall there. I can tab to go into my preview mode, and I can turn to see that. But if I want to add a new little uh, sector here, so let's say I wanted to add a little little room right here. Uh, what you would normally do is add a new sector. Now you could, if I wanted to, I could like left click here and add in some vertices and then start moving them out and moving them in like so. Uh, and then that would be considered the same sector as this, which might be useful depending on your setup. But in many cases, what you want to do is create a whole new sector. So with in vertice mode and snap on, I'm going to come over here. Instead of left clicking, I'm going to hit space bar. Then I'm going to come over here and hit space bar. Over here, hit space bar. And over here, hit space bar. Now, you can see where my 3D view is previewing, pointing this way. I'm going to go ahead and hit tab. And I'm going to turn. And you can see our wall indentation there. And then this little room, which is considered the same sector that I'm standing in, even though it looks like it's a separate little room, over here, this is a whole new sector. Now, why would you want that as a whole new sector? Well, now I can do things. If I tab out of that and hit S to go into sector mode, and that's 
already selected, but I could select it by clicking it. Now I can go, I want the ceiling lower or the floor higher. And now if I go into 3D mode, I can hit tab to see that. And I can see that new little sector. I create a little, little shelf there, a little windowsill, if you will. Uh, and now another thing you'll notice is our wall texture is a little off. They don't line up properly. Uh, which we'll talk about that more in a future video. Uh, but I want to talk more about the floor, uh, raising of the floor and lowering of the ceiling or the other way around. Um, and again, I can come in here in the 3D mode and I can click these like so to modify them to get them to where I want. And I can line up the textures somewhat like that. But you can see even though I line them up, they're not quite right. Um, but it's kind of annoying come over here and click these buttons. You can also input numbers. So I can say like 128 here. Now it's a little bit higher. Uh, but what I like to do is keyboard shortcuts. So with that sector selected, you can use comma to lower the floor and period to raise the floor. And then you can use the brackets on your keyboard. So that's, you know, top row all the way, you know, the QWERTY row just past the P of your square brackets. You can use those to move the ceiling up and down. So that is a quick view. We've created a little room here. Again, I can hit Control S, Control T to preview this. And now I can walk around this room. And again, and it didn't take very long. You have this a decent looking room, you know? And uh, Doom is, again, designed so well and so simple that Anyone creates something, I mean, you can make things look horrible, but it's kind of hard. You kind of have to try to make things look horrible. Things look pretty good like this. But we're going to expand on this more in the next tutorial. So check out the link in the description for the full playlist. Thanks for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Again, the link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.